with me today, and Pastor Lise is going to come in a few moments and teach on this important topic. Throughout the, the Bible, there are several uh, truths and teachings on this topic. I think it's a healthy, positive uh, form of church leadership. I'm thankful for it. If you, if you have questions, keep asking till you get the answers. If you're seeking understanding, keep an open mind. I will tell you that it's not the way I was raised in ministry to, to understand church leadership. I am not telling you that I think the way I was raised in church ministry in terms of understanding leadership was wrong. I think that we have grown to the point that this is now the right style of leadership for our ministry. I believe it's biblical. I believe it's effective. And I believe God is, is honoring our faithfulness to move in this direction. And I'm very thankful for that. We're on a limited time schedule, so without further ado, would you please make feel welcome, Pastor Elise. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Introduction to biblical eldership and deaconship. Uh, it's like gov gov government. It's government of, of the church. Okay? Now, when you say church, uh, I hope we understand they are the lo local church, what we call the, a, a, a local body of believers. And then you have the, when you put all of them together all over the world, they call them the universal church. Okay, and that's what Catholic mean, universal church, every be believer in Jesus Christ, okay? Now, there are three things I think it's very important from the get-go that we understand. When it's come to church, gov gov government, Christ is the head of the church. That's it. No one else. Christ is not the Pope, not anybody else. Christ is. Okay. The second thing that we need to understand is that uh, every local church is self-governed. Okay, this is not Pastor Lacy, but it's just uh, the scriptures. I'm just saying it because it's a, it is an introduction, and we have 50 minutes to to cover. I'm not comparing it to to the United States, but you have a federal go government, right? But you have the states, and even the states, they have their county stuff, okay? Right, okay? And then another thing that uh, we need to understand from the get-go is that these bodies of, of, of believers, the, the government, they are consisted of two offices. You have the elders and the deacons. Okay? You have the elders and, and the deacons. So this is what we are doing this, this morning right now. We're introducing eldership and de de deaconship. The word elder, to start with, ha has two, two meanings. Okay? You... The first way it's used, it's used for age. Okay? It's used for age. And then the second way it's used, it's used, uh, the, it means overseer, like a ruler. Okay? And this is important if we have to understand this because that's where a lot of misunderstanding comes. So the secondary use of it is an official significance. Okay? Uh, someone in office. So when you say elder so-and-so, it's someone who has an office. You, told, you say that's some, someone, but that's someone overseeing something. That someone is ruling over something. Okay? So you have the person you call the elder, but you have the job the person is, 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 is doing. And another thing I think that we have to get from the very beginning is that uh, overseer and bishop, 
is the same thing, the same word. If you say an elder, an overseer, or a bishop, is the same thing. Okay? Now, nations from the very beginning, from, from Genesis, we find other nations, they had elders, elders in the second sense. Okay, uh, I want to read this Genesis 57, 50 verse 7 that we all uh, probably know about. Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went, went up all the servants of Pharaoh and all the elders of his house and all the elders of the land of Egypt. This is not talking about the elders of Israel. Those are, were elders in Egypt. So even in Egypt, they had those rulers, and they called them elders, of, of, overseers. And in Numbers 22, 7, and the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the reward of divination, Etc. Et so all the nation, long, long time ago, they had elders. They had those rulers and overseers and bishop. They called them the elders. Israel obviously had, because you remember God sent Moses, right? But he said, Moses, you're going to gather the elders of Israel. And it was, Moses didn't come up with it. Actually, Moses had to go to meet them to get permission to, 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 to tell uh, the elders that the Lord had sent him. Okay? Not only they had, uh, Israel had el elders, national leaders, but they were also in the cities because in Deuteronomy uh, 19.12, the elders of his city shall send and fetch him thence. So many, many scriptures talking about the elders in, in cities as well. But also they had religious authority too. We know that, right? Be, before Moses, how did they used to worship? How the people used to worship? People pray, right? People prayed and... You know, and then uh, by Moses when they were in the wilderness, how, 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 how did they worship? Yeah, and then we had what, they had what they called the tabernacle, right? The tabernacle. But when they get to Israel and David decided to, to build and he could not build, God didn't want, and Solomon had to build and they had the temple. So they had worship and all, all, all that. But something else came about beside the temp temple. What, what was that? I, because they had to go away and they had to come to the temple a certain three times a year, mandatory. But while they were everywhere else, they had some, something else. The what? The synagogues, the synagogues, right? Right? Okay, anybody can tell us what the synagogues, something about the, the synagogues, how the worship were, how the structure organization was, if you know anything about the synagogues? No one? Yeah, please, piece of worship. Do you know how it was structured? Okay. Okay. Did they have uh, a, a did they have a pastor? They had priests. Okay. It, it's interesting if you go, if you go deeper in, into it, you will see it's the same structure the church, the early church, we really, really adapted. Okay, and then uh, the, some few scripture to uh, just to give you an idea. When we look at Luke chapter eight, 
verse 441. The Bible says, And behold, there came a man named Gerius, and he was a ruler of the, of, of the synagogue. He says it was a ruler. Actually, this word ruler means elder. Okay? And it says he was the, pretty much in the original, it says he was the main elder. It says he was the main elder of the sin, sin, synagogue. In Luke 13, 14, the Bible says, A ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the sab Sabbath day. Okay, so the, the, it says, and the ruler, and that's in, interesting because they had, uh, in the first scripture we read, he says, a, a ruler, and then now it says the ruler. Okay, and then uh, when you go deeper into this, you find uh, what we call pastor t teacher pastor teacher so in all the synagogues there were there was that one first pers person who was the main teacher among the elders so they call him the the main ruler okay and there is another thing very interesting is in james chapter 2 verse 2 for if there come unto you, un, unto your assembly, a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there came in also a poor man in vile raiment, etc. But the key word here, if there come unto your assembly, obviously James was talking to the early church, okay? But the word assembly here means synagogue. It's the same word for synagogue. So it was a Christian. They, they consider the, the, the Christians' assemblies like it was the same thing as the synagogue. Okay? Uh, in Luke 4, verse 20, when Jesus had to read, for the first time, and then he, he revealed himself being the save, save, savior. The Bible says he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the word minister here is the same as deacon. And then when you read into the synagogues, they had deacons. So they had the elders, and they had the de deacons. Okay? So... The word elder itself was first mentioned in the Bible, in the New Test Testament, in Acts chapter 11. Verse 30, you remember when they had to send help? Verse 29, then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. First time you see the word elder when it comes to the church. First time. But it's interesting that Luke just said, assuming they knew what an elder is, what they do, what qualification? Of course they do, because it's not anything new. It's new for you and for me. But for them, they grew up with it. They knew what an elder was. And the, the synagogues had, had them, and the country had them, their city ha has them, so it was no big deal. So when the Bible says, just says, okay, they went and ordained elder in all every church is there it wasn't a big deal everybody knew what an elder was what they do and their qualifications all right so god himself in his church he placed and then uh, the last scripture to my in introduction is uh first corinthians twelve twenty eight, and god hath set some in the church 
apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, and he also set in the church government. Government. And this is what we're talking about. Government in the church. Okay? So eldership, to be uh, quick, because we want to have time for for uh, quest questions. Eldership is biblical first. Okay? It's not something we say, okay, well, I think it's a nice thing. I, I think it's a nice thing. It's bi biblical. Okay? Now, Because all over the, the, the Bible you can see it. And plus God is interested in how his church is governed, is led, led. It's not like, okay, do it however you want. Okay? And secondly, eldership is pastoral. Okay? You know how you and I were brought up, or many of you, when you say elder, it's the, the mentality is like you have the pope, and then you have the cardinals, and then you, I don't know all the structure, but for, 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 for evangelical, we know you have the pastor, and then you have the associate, assistant, etc., and then you have elders, and then you have deacons, that's not the way it is. Eldership is pastoral. Okay? And this is where we find that in uh, Acts chapter 20, 28. This is Paul talking to the elders of Ephesus. Okay? It says, he told them, take heed therefore unto yourselves, talking to the elders, and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers. The Holy Ghost made you overseers to feed the, the church of God. Talking to the elders. To feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So, he talking to the elders, he says the Holy Ghost hath made them overseers, has made them elders, bishop, the same word, bishop, overseer. To do what? To feed the church. This word, to feed, is what we call pastor, to pastor, to shepherd, the flock of God. Okay? And First Peter 5, 1, 2, it's the same thing to the elders. He says, the elders which are among you, I exhort. These are the elders who are among you, I, I exhort, whom I'm also an elder. So Peter was an elder. And a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. This is what he told them, the elders. Feed the flock of God. Pastor the flock of God which is among you. Taking the oversight thereof. Here is bishop. Okay? Not by constraint, but willingly. Not by filthy, for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Now, the different aspect of shepherding, the different as aspect of pastoring, you have te teaching in, 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 in it. Okay, uh, to pastor and to teach. These are part of the, the qualification, and I'm sure uh, we don't need to spend much time on that. But an elder must be apt to teach. An elder must be able to, to refute. An elder, really, that's uh, his job to feed the flock. Okay, so. Uh, in, in, in an elder is to, to protect the flock. 
and whatever it takes. And you have to refer to imagine if a, a flock of sheep, uh, how they are innocent and you, they cannot protect themselves. Okay, and then you find uh, they have to lead, an elder lead, okay, and then manage, because you have a flock, you have to have some skill in management, you have to manage their food, you have to manage the water, you have to manage the land you're going to take care of them, I mean, management involved, okay, and then uh, a shepherd, uh, aspect of it is caring. <laughs> Sheep, you have to care. Those who are sick and who are lost and, and have issues. That's where the funerals comes and then prayer. People seek. James says, call the elders if they are sick among you. They'll pray for you. You know, so this is uh, elders, okay? James 5, 14, 15. If is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. For the elders of the church. Because they are the pastors. The, they care for the church. And let them pray over him. Anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. Okay. And the, uh, for eldership, it's a qualified Eldership. It's not like whoever wants it, you get it. It's not the way it is. And the qualifications are, 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 are clear and sim simple. Uh, in uh, 1 Timothy 3, he's talking about, it's a true saying, if any desire in the office of bishop, he desires a good work. And a bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, giving to hospitality, apt to teach, not giving to wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy or looker, be patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity, not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. He must, be, he must have a good report of them which are without. And also, he, eldership is spirit appointed. We just read in Acts chapter 20, he called the elders and he told them that the Holy Spirit appointed them el elders. Okay? appointed them elders to feed the flock of God that he has purchased. And uh, the last uh, aspect, one, what eldership is, is plurality. And then uh, it's, uh, when you dig deeper in the Bible, you, you will not find anywhere where the word elder is in singular, except if it is talking specifically about one elder. Like we just read about Pete, Peter, he says, I am also an elder. So that's sing singular. And then you find where uh, John says he was an elder. That's the only thing. After that, the second aspect of the word el el elder is always in plural because all the churches had mul multiple elders to, to lead them. So this is the introduction to eldership, okay? Now, you know, after Je Jesus left, he, he picked 12, right? He picked 12 before, before he left. Because he was thinking about the future, right? He said, okay, yeah, my time come to go. My mission is over. I don't want to work in vain. I want the work to go on. He went to the mountains and he prayed all night. And then when, when he came back the next day, he picked 12 among all his disciples. Uh, and he called them apostles. 
And then he gave him the charge to organize the church while he's gone. So, the apostles had, who stayed at Jerusalem after Jesus left. They were all at Jerusalem. But there was a church in Jerusalem, as, as you know, and there were elders in that church too. So in the church of Jerusalem, you had the elders and you had the apostles there. So it's like a kind of myself, Pastor Pin, Pastor Taylor right now. We are in the church here. We, we are like the apostles in a sense. And then you have the local elders. The local elders still the main running the church, but the apostles there to organize the church, stuff like that. Okay? So the apostles, while, while they had that great mission, and the church was growing so fast, and we find an example where they started to get stressed with all this thing going on. And then one of them said, it's not good that we leave the work of God and serve table. And, and, and then uh, they get together and they say, okay, let's ask the people to choose among them able men and, and give qualification who they should pick. And then they pick seven men to serve table and the Bible says that they themselves they could give themselves into the ministering of the word and prayer. Okay? So okay, so the main job they had was to lead the church to feed spiritually, but they needed help. So they get with that. So that's how that's what we lean toward Deaconship and his go on their argument whether that was where it really started. But regardless, we find out, like when Paul wrote, for example, in uh, Philippians chapter 1, he greeted the elders and deacon. Okay, he, he greeted them. So, this is uh, so the deacons, what they do, the deacons will do everything else. That will help the apostles, the elders, to do their job. Okay, there isn't a, a clear list of what deacons do. Okay, deacons would uh, do whatever it takes to help the elders to concentrate on protecting, on feeding, on do whatever their spiritual du duties are. What the job of the elder is, is very clear. But what the job of deacons are, are not clear. They help, they, they, they are not assistant. That's a very important. They are not assistant to, to the pastors. They have a different, uh, different branch, di different office. But what they do, help everything to go well. Another thing I want to say also, because I know in many churches, deacons lead, and they, they vote in and vote out the pastors too. I don't know if you know that. The pastors, the elders, are the overseers. They oversee everything. And so it is important that we, we know that. 